Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In today's Zoom video, I'm going to cover one of my favorite Zoom topics called co-host. I actually made a video about this back in November of 2020, but Zoom has made some changes to how co-hosting works and it's worth a redo. So before I even do get into actually showing you how this works, three things you need to know right up front about co-hosting. One, co-hosting will only work with a licensed account or paid account. So if you're on Zoom's free account, which Zoom calls basic, you will not have the co-host feature. Item number two, question I get all the time about co-hosts. Can I make someone a co-host before the meeting starts? The answer is no. That is called alternative host. Co-host works when you, the host, have joined the meeting. Someone else is in the meeting as a participant. You'll make them a co-host. I'm going to demonstrate that. And the third item I get asked a lot is for co-hosting. Uh, I've got a licensed account. I don't see co-hosts when I pop into my meetings. You must enable it in your settings. So let me start off this video actually showing you how to do that. So just to prove this, I'm in my Zoom account. Up here, I've got a licensed account. You're going to go to your settings over here in the top left. You're going to jump to in meeting basics. You can scroll through here, but just do control F type in co-host the way you see it here. By default, this is turned off. I've already enabled it. The reason I know it's off is if I was to click on reset, it would turn it off and the word reset disappears. So off is the default. Turn it on. It's on for every meeting. One item I did test is I scheduled a bunch of meetings with it turned off. And now that I've turned it on, it does show up and you can make someone a co-host. So just enable it. So here we go. I've already started a meeting. <laughs> now I'm in a meeting. I'm the only one in the meeting and I'm the host. So here comes someone joining my meeting. By the way, this will prove that once you've enabled co-host, it'll work. I'm going to, I've got the waiting room running. I'm going to admit Karen. So here comes Karen. Now that someone else is in the meeting, you can have as many co-hosts as you want to. Two different ways to make someone a co-host. One, just right click and there is make co-host. Click on yes. Karen is now a co-host. Method two, and by the way, to remove co-host permissions, right click, remove. Now Karen is not a co-host. Go back. Method two is pull up your participant panel, point to someone's name, go to more, and click on make co-host. Again, you can have as many co-host as you want. You're the host. You can only have one host in a meeting. One tip I have for you, I recommend if you're leaving the meeting, even if you've made other people the co-host, make one of them the host. But I'm going to go back and make Karen the co-host again. Yes. And it'll show you. One thing I like about the participant panel, it's an easy way to see who you've made co-host in here if you've got multiple people. So now, what is it that a co-host cannot do that the host can do? Two of the reasons I redid this video, and I'm remaking it right now, is a co-host in the past could not admit people from the waiting room if the waiting room was enabled. So now a co-host can. So if someone popped into this meeting, and I'm the host, and I'm into my uh, PowerPoint slideshow, Karen could say, oh, there's someone in the waiting room. I know them. And Karen could admit that person. A co-host can also send people back to the waiting room, in case you're wondering. What a co-host cannot do, as far as the waiting room is concerned, is if the waiting room was not turned on for this meeting, and I wanted, I decided later, after the meeting started, to enable it, a co-host cannot turn on the waiting room but they can admit and send people to the waiting room. What else can a co-host not do? A co-host, if you notice, I'm the host down here in the bottom right corner. I've got the word end. A co-host cannot end the meeting. A co-host also, because I've got a licensed account, a co-host cannot turn on live streaming. 
for my account, you only see YouTube, but I believe it's YouTube, Facebook, and there's one other item you can live stream to. A co-host, not only can they admit people from the waiting room and send people back, they can help you manage your breakout rooms now. So the co-host can start the breakout rooms, assign people to breakout rooms, and a co-host can go in between breakout rooms. Another feature that back in November they couldn't do. And finally, one other item though that a co-host cannot do is a co-host cannot make someone else a co-host. Only the host can assign co-hosting privileges. So I hope this uh, helps. This is an update from November 2020. I'm trying to keep this short. Let me know if you have any comments or questions about the co-host. And remember, if you want to assign someone to be a host prior to the meeting starting, that is alternative host. You got to be on the same account though, same licensed account to be clear about that. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. I appreciate your time. Feel free to subscribe. Don't forget to visit my website, which I have the URL up here. I have a Zoom resource center with keyboard shortcuts, my latest blog post. And we even have down below here some virtual image backgrounds and virtual video backgrounds for Zoom. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>